pseudomonas let's talk 5 to 10 classical points to remember the major cause of the nosocomial pneumonia we are worried about pseudomonas nosocomial uti because of your poly catheter right poly catheter intervention surgical site infections pseudomonas severe burns patients pseudomonas and somebody is having neoplastic therapy or chemotherapy and is having a low neutrophil count pseudomonas is the infection which need to be remembered so how do you describe pseudomonas it is motile polar flagella polar flagella is a very important uh, finding it will not ferment any carbohydrates and uh, it can undergo anaerobic respiration because other than oxygen it is capable of using nitrate as the ultimate electron acceptor so it can live anaerobically its nutritional requirements are very minimal so it will tell a urinary bladder did i ask you food did i ask you money i did not ask you anything my requirements are very minimal i will eat only once in a week please let me stay with you it will ask bladder poor bladder innocently thinks okay it's all right comes pseudomonas okay nosocomial uti and uh, any type of organic matter whether it is halwa whether it is upma whether it is idli anything it's fine for me i can eat just like some of our classmates used to say don't tell me did you like the food when you are paying until you are paying anything is okay for me to eat along with you coming is our uh, one of our classmates uh, used to say so pseudomonas is like that wide variety that is the reason whether it is a laboratory water bath or a hot tub or iv tubing or water containing vessel any where pseudomonas can grow because its food requirement is very minimal okay doctor typically i'll give you one small case so that it will be very boring to only get facts we put a hickman catheter what is hickman catheter somebody requires a total parenteral nutrition for a long period of time tpn you can't put a jugular vein catheter and maintain him for long period of time so we drill one small subcutaneous tunnel and put this hickman catheter which is the way by which uh, uh, the uh, regular nutrition is being sent to that instead of catheter being outside it will be subcutaneous tunnel but this guy developed uh, that uh, indwelling hickman catheters infection example of a pseudomonas effect now it has got pili and there are mucoid strains of pseudomonas why we need to remember in cystic fibrosis this mucoid strains there are also non mucoid but mucoid strains of the pseudomonas predominate is what need to be remembered why some strains produce mucoid because their capsule has a repeating polymers of uh, glucuronic acid which uh, enable them to produce mucoid colonies then uh, if there is any genetic mutation some of these uh, pseudomonas species can produce a capsule which is made up of alginate why are we worried about this the presence of this alginate capsule make them to become more resistant to the phagocytosis and that helps them to increase their virulence so these are the two buzzwords about capsule only pseudomonas capsule only got uh, some special names inside it alginate expression and uh, glucuronic acid composed mucoid capsule is equal to pseudomonas are the buzzwords to be remembered now what are the important uh, infections of pseudomonas keratitis 
endophthalmitis after a trauma, pseudomonas, external otitis, rimmers here, pseudomonas. Similarly, in the diabetic patients who are elderly or if there is any trauma, then there can be a necrotizing otitis externa called malignant otitis externa. It's due to pseudomonas. So, this is an example of a swimmer's here, which is due to pseudomonas. And this is a malignant otitis externa due to pseudomonas. Lot of times question was asked. What is the organism responsible for malignant otitis externa? Then suppose if you get into a swimming pool or a hot tub and enjoy a beautiful massaging effect of that uh, fumes, right? At the end you may have hot tub folliculitis it is called as. Which is once more due to the pseudomonas is what need to be remembered. Then in hospitalized patients who undergo catheterization, uh, there can be development of pseudomonas. Then uh, if there is any congestive heart failure or chronic lung disease, pseudomonas, lung infections and pneumonia are very common even in cystic fibrosis. Even in the patients who are on ventilator also, pseudomonas pneumonia is very common. Then uh, in neutropenic cancer patients, they are at uh, a great vulnerability to develop a necrotizing enterocolitis which is mediated by pseudomonas. Even the preterm infant pseudomonas associated necrotizing enterocolitis is a very common infection. And uh, pseudomonas is capable of invading the blood vessels. Very few organisms, some of the fungi and pseudomonas are known to invade the blood vessels is a special nature of them. Then it can lead to bacteremia, pseudomonas in immunocompromised patients. Similarly bone and joint disease, secondary pneumonia. Then IV drug abusers, it can lead to development of uh, the bacteremia and uh, uh, in IV drug abusers, one of the organisms leading to endocarditis, we should remember, other than enterococcus, even pseudomonas also. Then, why so many drugs pseudomonas is able to develop a resistance? Because it will create efflux pumps, which will wash out the antibiotic from inside the bacteria. Because the efflux pumps, which is the main cause of the pseudomonas resistance. So, how will you isolate this fellow called pseudomonas? We can use a non selective medium like blood agar, when it can grow everywhere, do you need a special medium to grow it? Similarly, you can use a moderately selective medium like McConkey's agar. And uh, if there are a cluster of cases, you are think all of them are pseudomonas infected. For example, if a swimming pool got contaminated, everyone developed a hot tub folliculitis like uh, folliculitis in swimming pool. Then serological typing is the one which is used for the investigation. Then you are walking in the ward, smelling the patient, of course, we don't expect uh, all session doctors. Uh, or uh, canine uh, capabilities we don't expect, only clinical capabilities we expect. But still, two diagnoses can be smelled, we say, no, diabetic ketoacidosis. From distance only you can feel the acetone uh, breath of the patient. Of course, the requirement is you need to wash your mouth uh, on a post duty, after a night duty, then you can perceive that ketone smell is better than your uh, oral uh, smell, but uh, a characteristic fruity odor next time when comes uh, Mobin, Dr. Mobin, what are you going to do? Smell the diagnosis of pseudomonas is what you need to basically remember. So, pseudomonas grows like this in the blood agar and uh, this is a example of a mucoid strain. See all this mucoid strain of the pseudomonas, typical in cystic fibrosis and glucuronic acid is responsible, polymers of glucuronic acid in the capsule and this is without mucoid type of a strain.
that blue green pigment called pyocyanin and pseudomonas you won't forget pseudomonas is oxidase positive and it oxidizes but doesn't ferment the carbohydrates like uh, lactose it is not a lactose fermenter that is all the story five to six points 